Good afternoon, and welcome to St. Peter and Paul for our celebration of the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our gathering song is All Are Welcome. Please stand. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, Rock of faith and bolt of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Father. My brothers and sisters, um, you might notice the quilts here in the sanctuary. They are here before because these will be raffled off tomorrow after the 1030 Mass. These are the tickets I think you received in the mail. Uh, and so I just wanted everybody to see them, and I thought this would be a good way for you to see them. So we have two over there. I think they're baby quilts. This one's really cool. I like that one. I mean, I like them all, but I think this one I like the best. And then Raggedy Ann and Andy. And that is a queen size quilt over here on the high one. And then there's two over here, and then there's two over here. So they're really all quite beautiful, and so these are... Uh, Shorter ones, these could be for babies or for your lap. I've come to enjoy having some kind of blanket on my lap these days. I guess it's a sign of wisdom, right? <laughs> That's what I'm going for. It's a sign of wisdom. <laughs> and the other piece, <laughs> the other piece is um, the communion rite will be restored this weekend. And uh, what does that mean? we'll have the communion rite just as we used to. So I'll talk about communion flow as we had it um, just before communion, but I just want you to know that uh, we'll have communion, then you return to your seats, we'll have the final prayer, blessing, and then dismissal, okay? So we're making progress as we can, and it's all for your safety. And we have washed down the place again this week, we're doing it every, other, uh, every couple of weeks with this uh, sanitizer or something. It's supposed to clean everything in the air and the wood and the walls and the, everything down to your soul. So the place is extraordinarily clean. I just want you to know that for your safety. So as we go forward, we are going to continue that we will go forward in health and safety and certainly in the sure protection of the Lord. So, my friends, as we come this day to hear God's word and to be strengthened by his sacrament, we come with open hearts and arms to embrace his will. And for the times that we have not been faithful, let us place ourselves now before God's great mercy. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, 
Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after us and make us always determined to carry out good works in your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us, this is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. I shall live in the house of the Lord all 
the days of my life. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with this glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, enlighten the eyes of our hearts, so that we may know what it is, the hope that belongs to our call. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus again spoke to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guest to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold to his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged, and sent his troops to destroy those murderers and burn their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike. And the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guest, he saw a man not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, 
bind his hands and feet, and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, over the past several weeks, we've heard the gospel according to Matthew as it reflected on the parables from Jesus. There was the parable directed to his disciples, remember the one about the kingdom of heaven, likened to a vineyard and a landowner. In that parable, it was about how those who worked all day got the same pay as those who only worked an hour or so. Then there was another parable about the vineyard and the landowner. This one, this time, Jesus directed this to the chief priest and the elders, because by now, Jesus had arrived in Jerusalem. Remember the parable about the man with the two sons, where he wanted one to go out and work in the vineyard, and one changed his mind, and the other son said that he was willing to work in the vineyard, but did not go. And once again, there was another parable directed to the chief priest and the elders, again about the vineyard and the landowner. The one about the tenants who leased the vineyard and never produced for the landowner's produce. Instead, they seized and beat the servants who came to collect the landowner's produce. Then, the landowner sent his son, thinking they would respect him. But they seized his son and killed him. I'm going to think maybe the chief priest and the elders missed the whole point of that statement. But looking back 2,000 years ago, the message is a little clearer for us today. The landowner was God, and his son was Jesus who, as you know, they seized, disrespected, tortured, and crucified. And now this weekend, the last parable of the landowner, the vineyard, and the kingdom of heaven. Bear in mind, all these parables were presented at different times as Jesus went about Jerusalem teaching. A time, as we all know, and we'll see in the coming weeks when Jesus did not make any friends, but he did make enemies. Because by now, the chief priest and the Pharisees were starting to understand that they were the targets of these warnings and that the kingdom of God will be taken away from them and given to a nation that will produce the fruits of God's will a church composed of Jews and Gentiles who believe in Jesus. Now Matthew's series of parables should help the readers understand that God's dealing with the Jews, their disobedience to him, the new covenant, which will include Gentiles, and how all this would happen through Jesus. So let us reflect upon today's parable and see if we can get a little better understanding of what Jesus is saying. The kingdom of heaven is like a wedding feast for his son, meaning in heaven we will find anything and everything we could ever want or imagine celebrating Jesus the son. And the gospel continues with the first invitation of the guest was intended for the Jews, but as we heard, they refused. So their place was taken by the Gentiles, and some of them were mistreated and killed, probably by the Jews. The ones that went away, we heard one went to his farm, one went to his business, they represent those and us who are too busy for Jesus. 
those who put ourselves first. The murderers in the story, they were the religious leader Jews who had Jesus killed. And the reference in the gospel to the burned city is the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans in 70 AD, not too long after Jesus' crucifixion. Now the servants, that'd be us, are directed to go out into the streets and invite whomever they find because our God is the God of all people. Because as Catholics, our faith is universal. So now, as we heard, the hall is filled with guests. And wouldn't you know it, someone shows up not dressed properly. Happened then, still happens today. But the funny part is, this has nothing to do with clothing. Although the precise meaning of the wedding garment is not clear, but the figurative language and the context of Matthew's Gospels it's likely to represent the lifestyle put upon us at baptism. Jesus is giving his listeners an image that they can relate to back in their time. Showing up to a king at a wedding not properly dressed is the same as showing up to God in heaven not having lived a life that was pleasing to him. So the underdressed man, if you will, had his feet and his hands bound and was thrown out into the darkness. Now the punishment for this social transgression seems a little harsh on the surface when actually it wasn't a punishment. Remember, these parables are designed for listeners to, to learn something. They're designed to teach. So the destruction of Jerusalem, the being rejected from the banquet, the wailing and grinding of teeth, how many times have we heard that in scripture, are all consequences of not listening to Jesus. Not necessarily a punishment, but a consequence for choices. Jesus never suggested that there would be punishment for him being rejected by the Jews. What makes us special, special creation, is our free will, our ability to choose right from wrong. Breaking the law would result in punishment. Eating too much before bed would have consequences. So why so many parables, and what exactly is a parable? Well, why so many parables? The easy and short answer is, Jesus had much to teach us, and there is much to learn. And the social media of his time was storytelling. Word of mouth spread the word of his father, using examples and metaphors that the culture of his time would relate to. Of course, Webster's Dictionary defines a parable as a short, fictitious story that illustrates a moral attitude or a religious principle. Well, I would not go right to calling Jesus' parables fictitious. But considering the violence in most of them, it's probably safe to say that they were what-if stories, using figurative language to make a point. There were 46 to 52 recorded parables of Jesus' teachings. And naturally, Jesus is the main character, if you will, in these stories. Just think of some of them. He was the shepherd. He was the bridegroom. He was the landowner. So it seems that without Jesus, a parable would disintegrate. And yet, these parables were designed for us and for all time. They help us reveal who we are, a look in the mirror, so to speak, for us to put ourselves in a place to follow his teachings. 
we can be a shepherd by caring for our sisters and brothers and lead them to Jesus. We too can be the landowner of the vineyard when we care for the land and the people to produce the fruit of a place of peace and love. And consider the parable of the lost sheep. A man had a hundred sheep, one went astray, so he went off to find that one to bring them all back so they would all be in one flock. God wants to gather all his creations to himself. Figuratively speaking, we can put ourselves in God's place. When we see a family member, a friend, a co-worker, a homeless person, pretty much any person who went astray, someone maybe who lost their faith, someone pretty much who lost pretty much all the hope in life, God's desire is for one flock and one shepherd. He has done so much for us. Surely we can do our part for him. Together, let us profess the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, God, in God, the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth, earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the boundless mercies of our God, let us now open our hearts in these prayers of petition. For the unity of the church, that all believers may share in the feast, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace among nations, that all people may live without fear, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For abundant harvest and generous hearts, that those who hunger and thirst may be filled, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For physical, spiritual, and emotional well-being, that those who are ill may be healed and made whole, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this assembly, that its members may be drawn ever deeper into the Paschal mystery, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Joseph and Albert Guzinski, Stanley and Florence Circo, Savitsky and Murray families, and for all whose salvation is known to God alone, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, those hospitalized, our loved ones in heaven, the intentions in our parish intention book, and the intentions held in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, as we open our hearts before you, we trust that you will continue to strengthen and guide us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our hymn for the preparation of the gifts will be here at this table.
and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good laws, holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with this sacrificial offering, that through these acts of devotion we may pass to the glories of eternity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now, we possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in this Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we now acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Holy, O Lord, you are the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our, our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Just a moment of, uh, to remind us for communion. Um, as it stands right now, I will have communion here, and the deacon will be here. Um, and so we kept these pieces down here so that we could be reminded of some distance between us all. So as the deacon is distributing communion here, I ask that the last row come down first. It'll give us a better spacing. And then from about this side back and this side over here, you go down, come across the back, and come up here. Don't cross against the seats, please don't. You know how we used to walk over the seats? Please don't do that. So everybody who's going to receive and you're sitting in this section, just come straight down here, okay? Like certainly you'll move over there, you'll move over here, that's fine. But if you're on the side, don't come across the seat. Go down the aisle and come up the back, okay? It, it's just a little bit more orderly, and then we don't have to worry about everybody spreading and touching and etc. And then so, Paul, for example, if you're here, your back should be right to the deacon so that you can direct the people from the sides right up to the center, and then you can direct these people up to communion. Okay? Pretty simple. And then this will be the way that we will do communion from here on out. And then, of course, you'll come over here and you'll come over here. Okay? The last shall be first and the first shall be last. That's one of the times you might not like scripture. Thank you. This is all for our convenience and safety. Our communion hymn will be Taste and See. Oh, and you go back to your seats. <laughs> Sorry. Taste and see. Taste and 
Let us pray.
We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with this nourishment, which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so may you make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Once again, thanks for your co cooperation. I thought it was beautiful and reverent and orderly, so thank you for that. I really appreciate that. And um, this, week, this month is going to be a lot busy. If you'd like to help us with those special collections, as we talked about, we certainly would appreciate that. Um, I don't know what else we're doing. We're doing lots of things. Just hang in there and keep praying. I don't know what else to tell you. I pray for you daily. I think that's it. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.